My name is Professor Gatrad. I'm a consultant pediatrician at the Manor Hospital. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to stop the plastic tide and also the circular economy. So I'll share my slides now. So here we are. So I founded WhatsApp in 2017, which is World Against Single-Use Plastic. And we are working with so many uh, organizations, including the Commonwealth Games, Canal and Rivers Trust, the Miss England pageant, and also many companies. Plastic has generally got impact on a lot of things. It creates greenhouse gases. Actually, there are six of these, and I've included water in it because water is something we can't control because that's something that is that evaporates from oceans, forms clouds. So in effect, it produces a greenhouse effect, but then it comes down as rain. So most people would not include water, but I still would. Obviously, it pollutes the environment. It pollutes the air, oceans, and the soil. It is a poison, which is, it creates leachates in the earth and the oceans, which affect the bacteria and kill not only the bacteria, but also marine animals. The microplastic itself ingest, is ingested by marine animals and kills fish and the birds that actually ingest this as well. But what about the children? Two billion of them around the world will survive on fish. And if fish is in less supply or if fish is contaminated, then children will be, children's health will be seriously impacted. So where does plastic come from? It comes from greenhouse gases and it forms 4% of all greenhouse emissions globally. So once it's produced, it's made into monomers and polymers, and eventually it's molded. And then unfortunately, most people throw the plastic away. They throw it away because it does not have any value to it at all. People are perhaps poorly educated and they're not recycling as they should and the animals and wildlife are therefore harmed by this waste. And microplastic, don't get me wrong, is actually in our food chain and it's affecting our fertility, causing cancers and harming our immune system. This microplastic, we can't actually see it. It's five millimeters or less, it's in our food. It's also in things like toothpaste and Christmas paper as microbeads. Uh, but these bits of plastic have reached even the most remote parts of the world. So what type of plastics are they? Well, they're classified as seven types. And sometimes you can tell by looking at them looking at the product as to which plastic it is. So this is plastic type one. So it's a symbol, it's a Mobius triangle. It's a symbol of recycling. So this is PET, which is type one plastic, fairly easily recycled. But the other symbols are slightly confusing. This is a symbol that tells us things are widely recycled. This is a green dot. It just means that the company that has produced that product has paid for its recycling. It does not mean it will be recycled. So taking the triangle story further, if it's that sort of triangle with somebody putting something in the bin, that's a glass recycling symbol. Similarly, this is an aluminum recycling symbol. And I'll go through the other six symbols and uh, discuss them in detail now. So type one, which is PETE, polyethylene terephthalate. Its characteristics are it's tough. It discolors when you bend it. And often it's on clear bottles, such as uh, water bottles and food trays. 
but this is something that's quite easily and commonly recycled. Then you've got something that you get on with milk bottles. It is tough plastic, but it springs back to shape. And these plastics, again, are quite commonly recycled. So that's type two, HDPE. Type three plastic, now this is tougher plastic, but it'll crack if it is stressed. And this is in pipes, in wires, and it's called PVC. And this is difficult to recycle. In fact, most people will probably not recycle this. Type four is the thin film that often covers your stuff that comes back from the uh, dry cleaner or it's plastic wrapping on food, etc. This is again uh, cycle, recycled, but the problem is that it actually clogs up a lot of machinery and therefore some companies may not accept this. So this is type four LDPE. Type five is polypropylene. An example of this is the, is the, is the butter tub. These are, uh, these are not commonly recycled, although some companies will recycle them. Then there's polystyrene, which you can get with, from McDonald's, or you have them in burger bars. And these are, again, not usually recycled, probably because they tend to be much more contaminated. So the message really is anything that's to be recycled should not be contaminated. So that's number six. The other type, which is seven, is a group that is very difficult to recycle and often made up of multiple plastics. And these include spectacles, CDs, DVDs, etc. So a lot of these need to be reused. And we use uh, our reading glasses uh, and by sending them to various countries that are poorly resourced. So we reuse a lot of our spectacles through WhatsApp World Against Single Use Plastic. So here we are. So ideally, we should have plastic nets creating spectacles. These spectacles are then, when they're discarded, but they're reusable, are collected by our Miss England finalists. Then they are sent to another country. And here I am in Pakistan. And then they are given to patients that have been operated on uh, after the cataracts. There are certain types of plastics which can be sent abroad to TerraCycle. These again contain multiple plastics, such as Walker's crisps, McVitie's, uh, packaging, all these, and, and even hovis, for example, or even pens. So all of these can be sent to TerraCycle, and this is their website, www.terracycle.com, and all the rest of this, okay? It is present in 21 countries, and over 200 million people collect stuff for TerraCycle. It, it can be collected and sent completely free to America. You can download the shipping labels and send things like crisp, crisp packets and chocolate wrappers. As far as recycling is concerned in the UK, as I said, better than most countries, 77% of the bottles are recycled, 50% of plastic packaging in general, but 32% of all plastic is recycled. Other countries, South Africa, 20%, India, 60%. But globally, plastic is recycled only to the tune of 12%. Largely because there are no recycling plants available, partly because it's ignorance, and also, most importantly, waste collection systems are not present in 84% of the world's population. So people just throw things away, which often goes up and clogs up the drainage systems, particularly, for example, in, in, in Nigeria, where, where it causes floods. So what are we going to do about all this? There's one way of doing it, and that is to promote a circular economy. 
because circular economy can actually help stop the plastic tide. Because if we don't stop the plastic tide by 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean. The role of circular economy in climate change? Well, it definitely has a role to play. In the last 50 years, our consumption of large quantities of natural resources has increased, partly because of the fact that we are eating and drinking more, and our populations have also doubled in the last 50 years. And this has obviously what a major impact on our environment and also the finite resources that we have in the world. 45% of the gases are produced by what we use regularly on a daily basis. So what is circular economy? Circular economy is a model. It is once you've produced something, you've used it, but this time you actually share it or you reuse it or repair it or refurbish it or recycle. And I'll give you examples in a minute. In this way, the life cycle of a product is extended and energy consumption, which leads to greenhouse gases, is actually decreased. The three principles of circular economy are eliminating waste and pollution, circulating the products within manufacture, and regeneration of nature or natural resources. If I could just stop and just let us think about what millions of people around the poor countries do, they actually help us to a certain extent by salvaging some recycled material and then they sell it to people to help them live. And these people do buy them, some companies do buy them for recycling or even building houses through eco bricks, for example. Pictorially, circular economy is where a resource goes on to production, the product is used, and it is recycled, repaired, reused, etc. So it's back in to manufacture. Whereas linear economy, which is really basically what most manufacturers and most of us do, is we get the stuff, we use it, and we waste it. In other words, you take, you make, and you dispose, and eventually pollute. So that is linear economy. So we want to be thinking about a circular economy. So 10 steps to sustainability of a circular economy are these. We refuse to do what a lot of people do, which is buy extra pairs of shoes, for example. Keep our cars idle and don't use them. So it's basically this greed culture that we have got that is creating a lot of our problem. We should rethink by redesigning what is being produced by the manufacturers. We should reduce what we are using by doing more with less. For example, getting plastic bottles to be used as eco bricks. Reusing is important, particularly in the fashion industry. And there are lots of companies springing up where they are using second hand garments that are being sold. And this is a thriving economy at the moment. We at WASA are using spectacles that are reused. Repair is the fifth principle. And the EU has actually adopted an eco-design law whereby manufacturers of phones, tablets, and laptops are obliged to make the products such that it is easy to repair them. Now that would make sense. Refurbish. There are some companies that collect old computers or old TVs and restore them as good as new and get them back into circulation. Or you could remanufacture, which means you use parts of computers or TVs to produce, 
produce new products with the same function. For example, new TVs have got old TV parts. Repurpose. This is an easy one in a sense. There are some, for example, if there's an old ladder, ladder it could be converted into a new books, bookshelf. So you can actually upcycle your product in this way. If you were to anaer anaerobically digest some of the waste that we have with microorganisms, that will recover our energy that would otherwise be lost in landfills. So it'll generate energy, which will reduce pollution, reduce water acidification and carbon emissions. Finally, I've deliberately left this to the end, recycling. Now recycling, as I said, globally, only 12% of it happens. But of all materials, what I was talking about was plastic. All materials is about 9% globally. So this also needs to improve. And there are companies in the UK, such as Loop. Uh, this company is an online shopping service which delivers products in reusable packaging. That is different, <clears throat> different from closed loop recycling. Closed loop recycling is where a product comes to the end of its life and is recycled into the same product. So that doesn't take a lot of time. So that's called closed loop recycling. But an open loop recycling is where, for example, a plastic bottle is at the end of its life is actually recycled in, with many other plastic bottles into a bench that is put in a park. Now that delays the disposal, but it certainly serves the purpose at the end of the day. So this is just a summary of what is recyclable. And in theory, as long as there's no contamination with, with uh, butter or, or, or with, with, with marmalade or whatever, then these items can be recycled. So all plastic bottles, soft drinks, milk juices, etc., plastic tubs such as margarine, ice cream, plastic pots such as yogurt, etc., and plastic trays, which are cake trays, egg boxes. This is a pictorial diagram of what can be recycled that we pick up on the curbside. Tins can be recycled, glass can be recycled, aluminium can be recycled, newspapers can be recycled, cardboard can be recycled, and all the other bits that we mentioned concerning plastic. By doing all this, we will preserve, enhance, optimize, and promote efficiency of our natural capital. This principle consists of making the most efficient use of our natural and renewable sources. What are the advantages of a circular economy? Essentially, there are six. Reducing the use of existing resources, reducing environmental impact, minimizing the impact of plastic on marine animals and humans, creating employment long-term and net savings again long-term by reintroducing waste into the production cycle. And all this will lead to innovation and we will get sector leaders who will excel in a market which uses recircularized products. The barriers to all this is that people don't appreciate the environmental impact and the drain of all the resources that we use on our natural resources, which are finite. Prices of virgin material, for example, pure plastic that, is just been, that has just been manufactured is actually less costly than the recycled material. So that's something that will have to be looked into. At the moment, the business models are harder to develop in the circular economy because the thinking and logic has always been to think in a linear economy, which is produce, use, and throw away. 
The demand at the moment for circular products is less, but in due course, it'll get more and more through necessity. And at the moment, there aren't as many qualified people that have the technical knowledge to set up uh, economies that are circular. This is a, uh, putting the same case in a different way, reduce consumption, substitute with paper, compostable, or even plant-based plant -based, uh, plastics. Increase recycling reusability. Increase waste collection around the world. Increase recycling capacity around the world. And ensure that we develop a closed loop type of uh, economy, whereby the same product goes into the same product production in a circular economy. So as I've suggested in the 10 steps that I've given you, some of them are here, before disposing, reuse, refurbish, remanufacture and repair. But importantly, we have to remember, we should stop exporting to other countries because these countries throw the rubbish away that we will, we did not like and they do not like either so i think importantly places like turkey thailand etc indonesia are getting a lot of rubbish that goes from us and actually not only goes into their landfills but clogs up their rivers so finally ladies and gentlemen if we were to have a good circular economy we will go down this particular framework and there'll be very little that reaches the landfill. That should be our motto. So thank you very much for listening. There is a little quiz that one could undertake, uh, but perhaps uh, I, I just go through it with you. How many plastic bags are used worldwide? How many animals are killed by eating plastic per year? How many tons of plastic dumped in an ocean every year? What percentage of marine litter is plastic? What will the world population be in 2050? And how many people does it take to make a difference? I will give you an answer to the last one. It is just one person, and that person is you. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you've enjoyed this. Bye-bye.